celebrations. It is in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, which is from September 15th all the way to October 15th. Um, so uh, this is gonna be a time where we're celebrating um, all the contributions that Hispanics have made to the world. Um, I know I, uh, with the decorations, thanks again for those who <laughs> helped with it. I know it's a lot of work. Uh, I do wanna just say thank you for those that are up here with me. Um, I have Mr. Cody Gaston, Luis Melchor, BD Knight, and myself, Mallory. We have the technology team in the back and those who help with the children's service and the nursery. Thank you again for all that you do. Um, as I was looking at what song to sing uh, for this service, um, Bendita Tu Luz is a beautiful song of where you go through life and you meet people along the way, and it's because God places those people in your life. And so this song is just um, in gratitude of you all being put into my life. So this song is dedicated to you. Esta canción está dedicada en todos que están aquí. Esto es en agradecimiento porque Dios te ha enviado en mi vida.
Amen. Good morning in the sanctuary. And a hello to those joining on us on Facebook. My name is Barbara Arsenault. I'm one of the lay leaders here, and I'm also a member and officer of the United Women in Faith. Today is Chapel Hill United Women in Faith Sunday, and also the beginning, well, the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month was September the 15th. Uh, I'd like to welcome our newcomers. Uh, welcome Doug, Jeremiah, and Dr. Pam Ray, who's with us today. And we are so happy to see Grace Turner here with us today. Amen. I told, I told Grace she's going to get a lot of hugs today. Also, we're so happy to see the Perrys with us today. So just welcome all of you. Uh, as I said, today is Chapel Hill United Women in Faith um, Sunday. And we do have a special guest. We plan the worship and we participate in the worship on United Women in Faith Sunday. And we have a special guest, who's Dr. Pamela Ray, who is our Las Misiones District President. And she will, you'll learn more about her when Vicki Lopez, our president, introduces her. We, today also we will be presenting special recognition pins to some deserving individuals. United Women in Faith is a community of women whose purpose is to know God and to experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ develop a creative, supportive fellowship, and to expand concepts of mission through participation in the global ministries of the church. Our ministry focus is on women, children, and youth. And to be a member of our organization, all you need to do is express a desire to be a member. I would like to introduce our officers, Vicki Lopez, our president, Ellen Brooker is our secretary. She was here at the 8.30 service. Uh, treasurer, that's me. I, <laughs> I am also Little Circle Chair, Family Coordinator, Communications Coordinator, Wesley Auxiliary Representative and President. Uh, Doris Lowe, our Spiritual Growth Chair and Priscilla Circle. And I forgot to tell you that Vicki is our darker circle president, uh, chair. Uh, Lynn English, who is our reading program coordinator, she's in the back. <laughs> Cheryl Hess, who sends out our greeting cards on special occasions. <laughs> Kay Collins, our Church Women United president, a uh, representative, sorry. Pastor Becky, who is our ex officio member. So, we are so happy to be doing this today. Um, now, Vicki Lopez will. No, sorry, one thing, one more thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let us pray. Holy God. Open our hearts to the silent presence of the spirit of your son. Lead us into that mysterious silence where your love is revealed to all who call. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, Vicki Lopez will present special recognition pins. And Doris Lowe will be assisting her. Chapel Hill United Women in Faith would like to present a special recognition award to Carrie Turner. He is a faithful band member, soloist, and occasional preacher. Carrie is also a Kairos team member.
Our unit would also like to present a special recognition award to Amy LePage. Amy is children's church leader during church children's time and vacation Bible school teacher. Doris Lowe is receiving a special recognition award from Randy and Basosa. Doris is our unit spiritual growth coordinator, Priscilla Circle leader, church bulletin board designer, and vacation Bible school helper. Doris Lowe and Barbara Arsenault would like to present Ed Albert with a special recognition award. Ed is a church trustee chair, Agape School, Sunday School teacher, and all people on the town show. Dr. Kimberly Gallegos is being presented a special recognition award by Vicki Lopez and Lynn English. Kimberly is uh, a children's church leader and she taught Vacation Bible School. A special recognition award is being presented to Rhoda Duran by Jeannie Jean Berg and Sybil Kane. Rhoda is a consistent reader of scripture for the 11 o'clock service. She helped with projects even when she had only one hand to use because of hand surgery. <laughs> okay. We thank God for all their contributions and talents. Thank you. All of those people are very deserving of that award. But Let us pray. Dear Lord and Father, thank you that you promise us that where two or three are gathered, you are there in the midst. Lord, we welcome you amongst us today and celebrate the gift of life that you have lavished upon each of us. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Marcella. <laughs> Now it's children's time. question for you guys. Who here likes cookies? Me. <gasps> yes. What's your favorite kind of cookies? Sugar cookies? Ooh, strawberry sugar cookies. It's coming close to Chris. <gasps> chocolate chip? Yum. A, class, a classic. Everyone likes chocolate. Macadamia nut? Mmm. It's, it's got like white chocolate chips and some nuts. What about, <gasps> have y'all ever had a snickerdoodle? Yum. I'm getting hungry. So, 
we're going to talk about some chocolate chip cookies, okay? The lovely classic. Have any of y'all ever made chocolate chip cookies? Yes. <gasps> yes, what do you need to make chocolate chip cookies? Sugar, good. Milk, maybe. Uh, what about some flour? <gasps> some eggs, maybe. Yeah, so, oh, maybe some baking soda, ooh, vanilla to make it taste even sweeter. So we've named off a lot of stuff, right? We got flour, sugar, oh, we might have missed butter, baking soda, vanilla, eggs. <gasps> chocolate chips, good job, Krista, for the most important part, the chocolate chips. So, if we... Yes, it would just be like a random, not so good cookie, right? So, if we just had the butter and sugar in a bowl, but no chocolate chips, we don't have a chocolate chip cookie. If we add in the flour, we still don't have a chocolate chip cookie. If we don't have those chocolate chips, it's not a chocolate chip cookie, right? Yeah, so, there's a story in the Bible, an apostle named Paul, is talking to people in Corinth. And he says something. He says, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love, love. right? So just like the chocolate chip cookies, if we have everything in us, but we don't have love, we're not really Christians, right? Because love is the most important thing that we need. And heart, right? Love is found in our heart, right? So, having a Christ-like love is the most important thing that makes us stand out as Christians. Love is like the chocolate chips in our cookies. But loving others isn't always easy, right? We have to be patient, we have to be kind, we have to be humble, we have to be forgiving. Humble means to just kind of appreciate everybody, no matter what, right? And we have to be forgiving, right? Because not everybody shows us love, right? But we still need to show them love. So, loving takes lots of practice. But we have everybody in this church to help us, right? Hmm? Waving does show love. So, just like we can't forget to add chocolate chips to our chocolate chip cookies, we can't forget to spread love to everybody else, all right? <gasps> yeah, let's say a quick prayer and then we'll go back for Children's Church, okay? All right? Dear God, thank you for loving us and help us to spread that love to those around us. Just like those chocolate chips are most important in those cookies, our love for you and everyone else is the most important as well. We love you and thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen! Bow our, bow our head in prayers, please. We come together to give you honor and praise. We ask that you would help us draw close to you. Please come and speak your words and wisdom into our lives. Help us to embrace one another, our similarities, our differences, our concerns, and our joys. We long for your touch on our lives, that we might be your hands and feet to the world. Inspire our hearts, heal our wounds, bring your peace into our worries and your hope and to our disappointments. Come, Lord, and weave your love into our fellowship together, that we may overflow with grace, and allow your truth to light up our lives anew. Amen. Amen. If we'll all join together now in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. If you'll all turn around and wave to those around you. As we listen for the word of God, may our thoughts linger on what is honorable and true, just and pure, pleasing and commendable, excellent and worthy of praise. Hear now from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 9 through 13. For we know in part, 
and we prophesy in part, but when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. We have the, the honor this morning of having our district uh, president with us. Pamela Ray hails from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and boasts an impressive educational background she received her Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and Special Education from Arcadia University, a Master's in Human Relations from the University of Oklahoma, and a Doctor of Philosophy in Education from University of the, of the Incarnate Word. Dr. Ray is a devoted wife and mother, and she lives by the mantra instilled in her as a young child by her family, service towards others is not an option. We welcome Dr. Ray. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. When is this? Praise the Lord. All right. Let's make sure you guys are alive out there. First of all, I want to give honor to God, who is the head of our lives and my household and the Ray family. I bring you greetings from Jacob's Chapel, United Methodist Church, where our pastor is the Reverend Robert E. Glenn, Jr. So thank you all for having me this morning. I appreciate you all. With me today, I have my family, my husband and my son, Jeremiah. And I think I saw my sister, Deborah Tanner, sneak in from Jacob's Chapel. If you're here, please stand up. Thank you for coming out and supporting me. <laughs> Deborah is smiling really hard back there because she is a member of uh, Delta Sigma Theta, that other sorority that we still love as Alpha Kappa Alpha women. But their colors are red. Our colors are pink and green. And we call this red accentuated pink. So I'm in accentuated pink today. But I know my sister Deborah is loving that I'm in this red. And she's probably going to snap pictures and send it off and say, look who's in red today. So, but I bring you greetings from Jacob's Chapel. And again, giving honor to God. And I'm glad to be here with you today. If my voice goes in and out, it is because it has been a United Women in Faith weekend, I shall call it. Yesterday, we were blessed to have over 95 women at St. Paul United Methodist Church for our district annual meeting. And your UWF unit was present. So thank you to the sisters from Chapel Hill for being there. Uh, they were recognized for being five-star women, uh, five-star unit, as well as uh, in memory in our one minute, one minute in memory service. So thank you guys from Chapel Hill for being there and being very supportive. We are a part of the Rio, Texas Conference of United Women in Faith, and we are and we still remain the largest district of the United Women in Faith in Rio, Texas, and that's because of your women here. So we thank you very much and I appreciate your time. The entire ride here, my family said, how long do you have? I said, I have 20 minutes. And they said, well, how many pages is, you know, you're gonna be speaking from? I said, oh, about four or five pages. That's not 20 minutes. And I'm like, I'll make it 20 minutes. So my son is on the timer back there and said he will signal me. Um, and my husband said, and he'll remind him to signal me when time is up. But I will not be before you long. But today I wanted to talk to you about the power of faith, hope, and love as mentioned in the scripture today. What a mighty powerful scripture that is. 
What I want you to do is look to your neighbor on the left and say, oh neighbor, you have the power of faith, hope, and love. Look to your neighbor on the right and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, you have the power of faith, hope, and love. As human beings, we are limited in our understanding. We can only see and comprehend a small part of the world around us, but we can take comfort in the knowledge that one day we will know fully, even as we are fully known, in the power of faith, love, and hope. As we grow and mature, we have to put those childish things behind us. And we begin to think and think of new things in a new light. We begin to understand that life is not just about ourselves. Turn to your neighbor to the left and say to your neighbor, it's not about you, boo. Turn to your neighbor to the right and say, it's not about you, boo. We have to remember that with the power of faith, hope, and love. It's not about you, boo. We begin to realize the world is complex and beautiful place full of wonder and mystery. But even as we grow and learn, we still only see a reflection of the world around us, like looking into a mirror. Our understanding is limited, and we can only never really fully comprehend the depth and breadth of God's creation. However, three things remain constant, even in the midst of our limited understanding. That is faith, hope, and love. These three virtues are the bedrock of our lives, and they sustain us through the trials and tribulations of life. Let's explore some of these virtues real quick. Faith, that's the foundation of our relationship with God. It is the belief that we are loved and cared for by a higher power and that we are part of a larger plan. Faith gives us the strength to face adversities and it gives us the courage to take risks and try new things. Faith is assurance, it builds a relationship with God, and it gives us hope. I know about faith firsthand. At the end of my first year of college and going into my sophomore year, my mother lost her job. She was a single parent, it was just her and I. And she said, oh, everything is gonna be all right. Now, here I am in my childish ways. I'm walking around the house pacing, scratching my head, I'm like, okay, how are we gonna pay for this? How are we gonna do this? Um, and I'm like, mom, what, what are we gonna do? And she kept saying to me, daughter, when she was serious, she called my, my role, my title, daughter, have faith. And I would ask her again, mom, but remember, I have to go back to school, we have to this, you've lost your job, and then daughter, have faith. Then mom said to me, I need you to go with me we have to go to the public assistance office. And I said, to do what? She said, well, we're gonna have to get on some public assistance and get food stamps. Now, here I go again, in one of my childish ways, I had what I call a Scooby-Doo moment. I said, mm -hmm. we gotta go to the what? The who? I didn't know what that was, even though we didn't grow up rich, but now we have to go to public assistance. And I had some friends in the neighborhood so did my husband, because we grew up in the same neighborhood and church. Everybody was on public assistance, but my mom always worked. Well, that changed, and I had to go. We sitting at public assistance, and of course, I'm in my childish ways. I hadn't put them aside yet, and I'm sitting there, and I think mom saw my body language, and she nudged me, and she said, daughter. I said, yes. She said, have faith. I said, okay. So. We go through about a few months of having to be on public assistance and 
She gets food stamps. That, I think they have the, what, the EBT card now, you know. That's, I'm telling my age. But we have food stamps or assistance. And it was quite a substantial amount. Well, eventually, the Lord blessed mom with a job. So she called me and she said, I got a job. I need you to come home. Now I'm back at school. She said, I need you to come home. I got to go back to the public assistance office. And we have to sign up and um, close out some things. And I said, close out what? She says, well, I'm going to give the food stamps back. Now here I go again, you all. In my childish ways, I had another I had a scrappy do moment now. I don't know if you guys know Scrappy Doo, Scrappy Doo for some of the young kids. So now I went, because by now she get like five, six hundred dollars in public assistance for food. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, that's a lot. Of, that's more money than even when you were working that we could spend on food. But she was like, daughter, have faith. So she decided to turn the money back in. And I'm like, why is she giving that back? Why don't we just go to the supermarket and spend it all? And, and then, you know, turn, you know, do the paperwork and close this out. But no, she had faith. So there's an example of me in my childish ways, but also being and bearing a witness to having faith. Because guess what? God provided for us. Even when she lost her job, I was able to return back to school. I got additional financial aid and so forth. So that's having faith. Would you all agree? Yeah. Right. So I put away my childish way, ways quickly with having some faith. In that also, you have to have hope. Hope is believing that things gonna get better. You see, just that fast, in faith, God and hope with God, things got better for us. It is the knowledge, even in the darkest times, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Hope gives us that motivation to keep going, even when things seem hopeless. Again, I had a model of hope and optimism, encouragement, and inspiration right there by the example that I went through with my mom. When things are falling apart, you must have hope. Another example of hope that I experienced was with my uncle. My uncle wound up um, having a terminal illness and went home with the Lord, but he refused to give up hope. We talked every Thursday, and he would say on the phone, you know, niece, I'm inspired by what has happened to me. I know I'm gonna go home with mom and dad soon. I don't want you to be sad. I've been able to live on this earth. I've seen certain things. I want you to have hope. Now here I go again in one of my childish ways that we're supposed to put aside. Now I'm sad and I'm saying I'm gonna miss you because this is the father figure I have known. So my uncle was the one that would be at all my recitals, games and everything because he stepped up and made sure that I had that father, father figure in my life. So he was hopeful, but I'm sad because eventually he's gonna leave us and then I'm gonna be like, okay, what is going to happen? But then he said to me one day, I want you to remember this. Hope is everything that you feel in your heart. Hope is the memories that you will have of me and all of the things that we have done together. Hope is refusing to give up and continue in your faithfulness that your mom taught you and that you will carry on in what you do. So I had a model in my family and in those examples of hope and faith in God. Last is love. There's nothing like love. Love is the greatest of these three virtues. It was great to see the children down here. That's love. That's love right there. Love is a driving force behind our actions. Love gives us the capacity to forgive, to heal, and to grow. I told our women yesterday, we all know what we are experiencing in the United Methodist Church. I'm not gonna say that D word. I'm gonna say the other D word. We've been distracted long enough by, you know, the affiliation. I'm not gonna say the D word. But we've been distracted long enough. And we need to love, we need to forgive, we need to heal, we need to grow. And this is our example of love. We're not the only church that has gone through tribulations. I have said to everyone, this is our Red Sea moment. God has parted the waters, and who will be on the other side? It will be those of us 
that are, have forgiveness, that have healing, and that are ready to grow in our heart. So we know how powerful love is. It enables us to put the needs of others before us. It's it enables us to be kind, compassionate, and empathetic towards others. It gives us a strong bond to withstand the test of time. I was blessed to have examples in my family. I'm even blessed as a third generation watching us go through what we're going through. But I know for sure that there is power in faith, hope, and love. In conclusion, faith, hope, and love, these three virtues must cultivate in our lives. They give us strength, motivation, and the purpose we need to overcome life challenges and achieve our goals. We cannot be motivated, we cannot have the strength and the purpose to do what we need to do when we still have those childish ways. So I'm grateful and I say glory to God that I put away my childish behavior. And now I lean on the power of faith, hope, and love. So my dear friends, let us hold fast to these three things, faith, hope, and love. Let us remember that even though we may not understand everything, we can still have faith that there is a plan. Let us cling to hope even in the darkest times. Let us cling to faith even in times that we don't understand. And let us cling to love for it is the greatest, the greatest gift of all. May God bless you all and may God keep you. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. So we really want to thank Dr. Pamela Ray. She has explained to us about faith, hope, and love. And you know, our theme is love in action. And yesterday at our district annual meeting, I know you've heard this cliche before, um, uh, actions speak louder than words. And so that's what the United Women in Faith try to do, is to put those actions into motion for women, children, and youth. As our ushers get ready to take up our offering, let us uh, pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today. With it, we worship you and give our whole selves to you. Please now, take it and use it for your kingdom and your glory. Extend and multiply its reach and influence, we pray. May it be a great blessing to many. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.
Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by They'll know we are Christians by our love. Praise to the Father from whom all things come. All praise to Christ Jesus from whom all things come. And all praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. By our love, yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Please stand. Priscilla Circle at 10 a.m. Sit and Stretch is at 2. Emmaus Reunion Group at 3 p.m. Wednesday Faith Up at 6. Thursday Sit and Stretch at 2 p.m. And Saturday is One Accord Concert. The church board meeting has been moved from Tuesday to Monday, September the 18th at 7 p.m. Please send all prayer requests to the church office from September the 21st through September the 29th. Thank you to everyone who set up and cleaned up for Roundup Sunday. Also, thanks to those who don donated food and served the meal. Save the date for the Big Brothers, Big Sisters, plus Chapel Hill Fall Festival, which will be October the 28th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. There will be food, games, Halloween costume contests, and much, much more. The food pantry continues to serve 75 to 80 families each week. And uh, they keep growing to closer to 200. Volunteers are still needed for Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday mornings. And they want to thank you for your support, prayers, donations, cereal, and canned meat, which are always needed. Children's Church has already met after this 11 a.m. service. Community walking, uh, they meet at Crossroads Mall and walk from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. And you may join them, call Randine Basosa or Nicole Simon. Faith Up Wednesday is at 6 p.m. for a light supper. Following, um, following will be fellowship, well, fellowship at that time. Following will be Bible study and other activities. And welcome again to our visitors. And Sybil Kane would like to make an announcement.
If you weren't at that 50s, 60s um, party on Friday, you missed it. We had so many talented people from the church do the uh, numbers from the 50s and 60s. And it's so good that we were able to raise $1,000 for the Robert Jolly family who lost their home in a fire. Amen. Amen. Now, as we leave this place, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. If you are lonely, when you feel afraid, you're not the only, we are all the same. In need of mercy, to be forgiven and be free. It's all you got to lean on, but thank God it's all you need. And all the people said amen. Whoa. Don't matter, we so strong, we know love is what we're after. We're all broken, but we're all in this together. God knows we stumble and fall. And he so loved the world, he sent his son to save us all. And all the people said amen. Whoa, and all the people said amen. Give thanks to the Lord for his love never ends. And all the people said amen. Let's get all the poor spirit who are torn apart. Let's get all the persecuted and the pure in heart. Let's get all the people hungry for another start. For this is the kingdom, the kingdom of God.